Hi, how's everybody doing today? This is Rich here on behalf of Rich TV Live with our very special guest. It is Danny Callow, the Chief Operating Officer of African Gold Group. How are you doing today, Danny? Great, thanks Richard and thank you for having me on. Thank you for joining us. Why don't we get started and you can tell us a little bit about African Gold Group and how you got the company started. Great, thank you. Well, look, African Gold Group has, has been around for a while. Um, it's in its current guise, we, we reinitiated um, work in, in August of 2019, but prior to that, there's been around 125,000 litres of, of drilling that's been carried out on its flagship asset um, and, and a feasibility study. Obviously, when we came in in August 2019, we had the benefit of a gold price that was, was moving in the right direction. And my background in building and developing mines in Africa meant that the, the board was keen to bring somebody on board that could help them take this to the next level, which was to take it through into construction, uh, ramp up, and then producing gold. So we, we've been busy with this since, since uh, August of 2019. And in the last seven months, we've been very busy in getting ourselves ready to deliver a definitive feasibility study, um, which will take us to the next level uh, in able to, to, to raise money and, and, and build the mine. So that, that's what we've been doing for the last few months. Very good. And we've been noticing the stock has been doing extremely well over the last little while. So congratulations on the success of the market going in the right direction. Now, AGG, African Gold Group, is focused on its Kobata Gold Project in Mali, West Africa. Can you tell us a little bit more about the project? Sure. So as you mentioned, it's Mali. Uh, Mali is, is one of the uh, larger producers of gold in West Africa. We are situated around 120 kilometers away from the capital, Bamako, to the southwest. Uh, we're in a region called the Sikasa region, which is a prolific gold producer. Um, we're smack bang in the middle of the Beremian Greenstone Belt, which is a prolific producer of, of gold assets in, in the country. And mining in, in Mali has been going for many, many years. So it's a very mature mining uh, country and, and, a, and a, I'm very used to, to mines coming in and starting up. Our project is, um, as I say, uh, in the southwestern part. Um, we aim to produce 100,000 ounces of gold. We've undertaken a, a large drilling program over the last few months to develop a definitive feasibility study. Uh, and this, is, this will enable us to, to raise the project finance to, to go forward and build it. Um, it's, uh, oh, sorry, yeah, it's, um, it's in a very, very uh, accessible part of the country. Um, the, the grades are reasonable for that area and the mining and the processing methodology is very straightforward uh, for West African uh, gold mining companies. So I believe that we have a great asset with uh, a multi-year 100,000 ounce production and plenty of upside. You know, we've, we've drilled around 15% of this whole deposit, um, four kilometers of around 30 kilometers of exploration potential on the property. Um, our concession is around 300 square kilometers. So I think that we have massive upside here. So even though we're ready to go and to start construction, we'll continue to drill and continue to upgrade our resources to make sure that we have a, a, a much longer mine life. That's great. And what are the benefits of developing a gold project in Mali, West Africa? Mali is uh, one of the, the, the larger producing countries in, in Africa. It's, I think, the third largest. Um, it has a great pedigree of gold mining in the country. Uh, Anglo, -Amer Anglo Gold Ashanti, um, Iron Gold, Barrick are all there. Um, a lot of the mid tier miners are there. The government is very investor friendly. Um, it has a very investor friendly mining code. Um, it's, the, the government are accessible. Um, the Ministry of Mines is made up of geologists and, and mining engineers, which is, is unusual for Africa. And the Ministry of Mines actually worked on this concession. So she, she knows the concession well. Um, she's visited the concession. Um, we talk to her regularly and give her updates. And the government are very keen for this project to come into to construction and production. Wow. Now, African Gold Group has been conducting an extensive diamond drilling program at Kobata. Can you tell us about the most recent results and what they mean for the project overall? Sure. So I think I mentioned up front that the, the, the company has done around 125,000 litres of drilling historically on this property. 
uh, and it produced a 2016 feasibility study, which, which we inherited uh, in 2019. When we had a look at that, we realized that we would like to do some more drilling. Um, so we engaged in the 12,000 meter drilling program, which takes us up to around about 140,000 meters of drilling. And that 12,000 meters was focused on the very small area of our concession within a range of about four kilometers. Now the intention there was to upgrade the resource both structurally in terms of a geological sense and also to do infill drilling to be able to convert these resources into reserves. And obviously reserves are what you mine. So when you can get a better conversion rate from measured and indicated resources into reserves, that gives you a much, much better opportunity to, to, to produce a good um, operating mine. And that's what we've been doing. So that 12,000 meters of drilling um, was completed in around about January of this year. Um, what we did do, however, is we started to investigate some of the other areas of the operation um, that hadn't been drilled before. And you, you may have seen some of the press releases that came out over the last three or four weeks. That was the, the final three holes that we drilled in this campaign, and we hit some really, really exciting gold grades. So much higher than the average gold grade that we've been seeing across the concession. Um, and this is to the north of where we expected the, the main open pit to go. So this means that we have some really great upside potential in some of these, these holes. And we're talking five, six grams a tonne over 15, 20 meters. So this is, this is really, really good discovery. And one of the things that we will be doing as we start to construct this mine is to continue drilling in this northern area. The other thing that is really, really interesting here is that um, we, we have 30 kilometers of identified geological structures on our concession, which, which are mineralized and, and able to carry gold bearing material. We've only drilled four of those. So we have another 26 kilometers of additional exploration and drilling to do to upgrade this resource. And when you have a look at it like that, at 2.2 million ounces and only 15% of the concession, I really think that we have some massive upside here as we continue to explore this, this property. So really, really very exciting times. How has the coronavirus, the coronavirus pandemic, affected the development of the Kobata Gold Project? Well, look, I think, I think first of all, I should say that I, this, this coronavirus or COVID-19 took everybody quite by surprise. I, I yes. think the, the reaction of governments to, to shutting down pretty much their economies almost overnight was quite a surprise. And Mali was no different. Um, you know, my heart goes out to, to all the frontline workers that, that have really put their best foot forward in trying to fight this thing. And I guess we complain about being stuck at home and knowing that we can't, we can't move around, but really um, these are the heroes in this. But Mali made a very quick decision to shut down the, the country um, towards the end of March. They um, had one or two cases only, but they did realize that in a country like Mali, when they have a fairly large population in some very uh, closely quartered sort of villages and towns, that this could get out of control quite quickly. So they made a decision to shut their borders, airports, um, fairly rapidly after, or followed suit with the rest of the world. And that's really done quite well for them because they really haven't had many cases. Um, fortunately, all of our guys on site doing the geology and the exploration were allowed to stay on site in the camps. Um, they were locked down inside the camps, but they could continue to operate. Um, we've had no cases, thankfully, of, of any, any of the, the, the coronavirus in any of our workforce on site, which is great. Um, the only thing that it has done is obviously inhibit our movement in and out of the country. But the good news really is that as in this stage now where we're going to complete the definitive feasibility study, most of the practical on-site work has been done, like the drilling um, and all of the geotechnical test work. So most of the, the work now is, is behind the desk and finishing reports and analyzing the data. So thankfully, we've been able to continue to do that. And we don't believe that we're going to lose any time in delivering the feasibility study uh, from when we said, which is the end of May of this year. So that's really good news. Now, it's vital when you're doing business in places like Africa or third world countries that you do community initiatives to really build that relationship with the people that you're going to be mining in their country. So what type of community initiatives are you guys doing in Mali right now? 
Richard, I'm pleased you asked that question because for me that is an absolutely fundamental question for anybody that is mining in, in a developing country. Um, you know, we, we have to see ourselves as good neighbors. We have to see ourselves as being part of this community that we operate in. We're going to be around there for hopefully 10, 20, 25 years, which means that when we go into these communities and we start setting up these greenfields operations, we have to, 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 to make friends and, 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 as I say, be good neighbors. And, you know, there's a, there's a second issue around West Africa, which, which is, it's not just West Africa, it's Africa as well, but, um, and that is artisanal mining. And what you have is a lot of informal mining happening on your concessions, uh, which is obviously not great for you. Um, but, you know, these, these guys are just trying to eke out a living. So, so there's two ways that you can deal with these things. And the one is, is through um, confrontation, which is always the worst thing to happen because if you're trying to be a good neighbor, that doesn't go down very well. And the other one is, is with conversation. And where we, uh, I think, have been quite successful here from August when we started this, this process up again, is that we've got all the chiefs of the local villages surrounding the mining area together. And we, we sat down with them and we asked them what they would like from us as a, as a good neighbor. And clearly a lot of that is, as you say, it's these social projects, it's these um, corporate social responsibility initiatives. Um, and, and we've got them thinking about some of the things that we could do to help them. And, and a lot of those things are things like uh, access to water, um, health, infrastructure, uh, a reduction in the malaria rate within the, the local surrounding areas. And then more simple things like employment locally first um, and buying goods and services locally. And it was amazing the change that came across the villages when we came in in, in 2019 and we said, right, you know, this is what we intend to do. However, this is not a one-way street. So we would like you to engage with the artisanal miners on our concession and we would like you to assist in moving them along. And we will happily employ some of those when we get up and running, but some of them we won't be able to. Um, but we need to move on now and, and get going. And it's been remarkable how um, this interaction right up front and this ongoing engagement has really, really bared fruit in terms of moving on the artisanal miners. We've already committed to some promises in terms of employment and buying local goods and services. And obviously, as we move more into construction, that will increase. Um, and I think we have a really, really symbiotic relationship between ourselves and the local community. If you couple that with the fact that we are upgrading our environmental impact assessment to World Bank and IFC guidelines, so we will be operating at the best of um, environmental best practice worldwide by the time we start to construct this mine, and also the highest levels of corporate governance, I think that we're really tackling what they call these ESG requirements of, of listed miners these days. So I, I think it's, a, it's not only something that's a good thing to do, it's something that's absolutely critical not only in terms of your, your value and your share price, but also in terms of, of, of what the requirements of, of the, the modern investor is. That's great. Now, what, com what upcoming milestones can investors expect from African Gold Group this year? Wow, well, you've, you've hit the right year because this is, this is the big year. So we've, we've taken a project that's really been uh, sort of stalled or on care and maintenance uh, up until August 2019. We've had a very aggressive um, uh, period where we've been upgrading the, 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 the feasibility study to a definitive study, and that involved a huge amount of drilling, as I mentioned. It also involved doing a full suite of metallurgical test work to make sure that we come up with an optimized process plant. And we've also done a lot of uh, test work around um, the, the geotechnical aspect of the material to make sure that we build our waste dumps properly, our open pit mine slopes properly, and obviously our tailings dam. So all of that's been going in to make up this feasibility study. So the first big milestone that you're going to see is around the end of May when that technical report is lodged um, with the TSX. Um, that will be a definitive feasibility level study, which as I've mentioned, takes us right through to, to effectively being able to go to the banks and the private equity companies and the investors and start to raise the money for the main project. So really in the next two to three weeks, you're going to start seeing a fairly good amount of news flow coming out of this company from the last um, good geological exploration information probably in the next week, and then bits and pieces of the key components of this study. So, so you know, watch this space, there's some great stuff coming. Obviously then once that's done, 
there's going to be a, a, a period of trying to raise the, the funds for this project. We believe that for a hundred thousand arms project, we're looking at uh, in the region of 80 to 90 million US dollars, which is in the lower quartile of a project of this size. And we also believe that our all in sustaining costs will be around about the 800 to 850 dollars an ounce number, which is fantastic when you think gold at around 1750 um, and 850 of your costs, there's a fairly large free cash flow margin sitting in there, which is great for investors. And, and you know, we know that the um, a, a miner that goes from explorer to um, producer has a, a, a very large re-rating typically um, in terms of stock price and things like that. So I think that's that's all that's going to be happening this year. Um, obviously, I, I, I think you know I think longer term, strategically, I think that we're fantastically positioned um, in AGG for um, the next three to five years in terms of not just this project but our other projects. Um, and also um, other projects that come along. So I think that we, if we had a look ahead, in three years we could be certainly producing out of two gold producing assets in West Africa. And in, in the following you know, sort of three to, to, to eight years, I reckon we could be up there with a multi-asset, multi-jurisdiction gold mining conglomerate, which is really, really exciting. Wow. That's, guys, you know, for guys that are watching all over the world, this is the... Undervalued, underappreciated, underexposed <laughs> mining opportunity that a lot of people don't really know about yet. And that's the opportunity for investors. So we've got investors all over the world that are going to be watching this video, are going to be learning more about your company. What's the best way for investors to get in contact with you if they'd like to learn more, if they'd like to invest, if someone is a joint venture or an LOI potential partner, how do they get in contact with you, Danny? The easiest way, Richard, is through the website, www.africangoldgroup.com. Um, it's a nice website. It has like, You can sign up to, to get newsletters and all the press releases. Um, there's also the latest investor presentation on there. And it has all of our contact details. I'm very happy to take calls and, and queries from, from investors. Um, it's, um, we have a vice president of corporate affairs, Daniel Bysak. Um, he's very active in, in following up and contacting people that visit the website. So, um, and then obviously we have uh, in, in the modern 21st century, we have all the, the social media sort of outlets as well. So you can find us on most of those. Um, and typically, you know, I'm, I'm fairly active on that as well. So I, I, I keep an eye on, on what's happening there. Uh, and as I say, I'm very happy to, to jump on a call or to give people more information about the company. Um, it, it, it's exciting times and, and we really need people to, to get on and visit the sites. Fantastic. Well, guys, thank you so much for watching and Danny, thank you for joining. Hopefully we'll have you on our show again. If you have any big news or anything you want to talk about, we'd love to invite you back. I am very bullish on gold, very bullish on gold. I think we are going to see a record price of gold um, over the next few months. I believe the highest we've ever seen is around 1900. If, I, if, if I'm correct on that, I believe we will see 1900, 1950. I even think we could see 2000. So that bodes very well for you guys if it's costing $850, right? And it's going to be $2,000 an ounce. That means you guys are going to have a huge profit margin. So congratulations on all your success so far. We wish you all the best of luck in your future endeavors. Keep up all the great work. This is Danny Callow, the Chief Operating Officer of African Gold Group. Have yourself a great day, Danny. And is there anything else you want to say to anyone that's watching? No, I don't think so, Richard. Thank you for the time. I look forward to coming back on with some, some good news. But I do agree with you that this is the right time for gold. Um, gold stocks are soaring. Um, it's a much better place to be than physical gold. Get in there, have a look at it. I think after the lockdown, there's going to be a massive reinvestment program. And, I think gold will be leading the, the charge. That's I agree with you 100%. Thank you for joining us. Okay, guys, thank you for watching. This is Rich from Rich to be Live with Danny Callow, the Chief Operating Officer of African Gold Group, a company that you have to have on your watch list and you have to put it on your radar. Thank you for watching, guys, and thank you, Danny, for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice day, everybody.